There's a universe inside each of us. The Innerverse Podcast is your portal to that infinite realm of ideas. I'm Chance Garten, and I'll be your host as we serve up inspirational sound waves from the brightest minds with the highest vibes. And we keep searching for the empowering perspectives we need to create our greatest masterpiece of all, our lives. Welcome to the One Within All to another episode of Innerverse. This recording is coming at you from October 13th, 2019 and a full moon in Aries, no less, which is my personal sun sign. So for me, at least, it's even more exciting because today we're going to be diving back into the world of astrology and exploring lots of other related areas while we're at it. Because the more that we can know ourselves, the easier it is to purge the malware installed in our minds from all the culture vultures out there and to manage our magnificent meat suits to our highest potential, which is, of course, infinite. And so that brings me to today's guest, Brianna Colombini, a gifted empath and intuitive healer who's all about helping others live their life's purpose and passions by sharing tools and guidance that increase one's understanding of their own strengths and weaknesses to maximize their positive vibe. Combining astrology, numerology, dream interpretation, clearing of energy blockages, and balancing chakras, Brianna helps clients take the little steps in life to heal physical and psychological pains, eliminate pathological patterns, and get people back into the action of life on all levels. She's also got a treasure trove of informative articles on her personal blog, which is called But First Truth, which is a pretty awesome name. She's the soother of souls and mender of minds, and we're lucky to have her here to share some time with us. And don't forget to check the show notes for links to BriannaColumbini.com for her teaching services and ButFirstTruth.com for her excellent blog. And you can find her on social media to connect, show her some love, and thank her for chatting with us. But first, give yourself a moment to dial in your mindfulness, collect some breath. And raise your vibration where you remember that your universal consciousness in a sequential experience of eternity and tap into the gratitude for the moments we're about to share with Brianna on her first visit to the podcast. Brianna, I've been stoked to talk to you since I first heard you on Unslaved podcast a while back. So it's awesome to be catching you on this high energy full moon. Thanks for being here and welcome to the Innerverse. Oh, man, that was a zinger of an intro. I'm going to have to get that recording and play it for myself and introduce myself that way. <laughs> Thank you so much for that chance. I love what you're doing here with Interverse. I can't wait to like start diving in more and listening to to everything you're doing with this podcast. It's so amazing. And it's my honor to be here. Honestly, Unslaved was a was a shot out of the dark for me appearing on a podcast with Michael Tesserion and David White. I look up to them so much and, uh, yeah, so I, I it unexpectedly expanded my network um, crazy. And this um, interaction with you is like an example of that. And so I was really grateful for what happened after that. And thank you. Well, I think you held your own against them really well. Not that you were like in combat or anything, but <laughs> <laughs> they're intense dudes. Uh, I had Dave on the show a while back and he was really awesome. And uh, I think that that community... If anyone's not familiar with Unslaved podcast, it's really worth checking out and becoming a member. I think that community is a strongly uh, grounded in the seeking of truth type of group, right? So it, whenever I don't just try to poach guests off there all the time, but you in particular really match the vibe that I try to hold down on this show, which is that, yeah, we we're love and light, but also let's be real about the shadow and not become one dimensional people who... <laughs> completely kill our uh, and repress our our dark aspects which is you know self-murder i love that yeah yeah i I, am recently like this you know whole business if you will that i'm that i'm kind of developing for myself over the last few years it's constantly evolving and we can talk a little about that in a little bit but (laughs) yeah it's kind of like i had 
lots of consultants, you know, like I talk to people and like in my network, like, Hey, how do you go about, you know, getting your name out there? How do you go about like attracting clients and things? How do like, what is this all about? What's this space all about? And over and over, I would hear that like, man, Brianna, like you're, you're like so spiritual. I'm like, you know, you're learning all this stuff and you got all this knowledge and you're so open, but like, I feel like I could come to you about like my finances, <laughs> you know, like this really like grounded, like earthy stuff in my relationships. And I would get like real practical. And I started to really appreciate and own that about myself. I was so, when I had my awakening, like four or five years ago, well, the first awakening of many, I guess, um, I was really like, oh my gosh, like I want to be like so spiritual and I want to be like flying high all the time, like blissed out, you know, I want to get healed, like do all the energy healing, crystal, like in which all that is so beautiful. I still incorporate that. But yeah, there's this very like, there's this very like wholesome, like coming into yourself when you accept what we call dark or shadow or, you know, scary, whatever, like. I feel like I just start living on fire from the moment I started like really diving in and accepting like those things and those parts of myself. So yeah, I'd have to agree with you. Right there. The things about ourselves that we desire to change or that maybe cause us pain or discomfort are like the grain of sand in the oyster that turns into a pearl to take a metaphor kind of of a Jungian way of looking at it. Which is really important, I think. I mean, we've got to have a type of pressure uh, if we're going to, you know, be going through the crucible of the soul that is life, which isn't necessarily like crucible makes it sound so harrowing and perilous, but (laughs) which I guess it is. But, you know, it's really your attitude towards the things that are changing or that you don't want to change that makes it, you know, turn up the heat or feel frigid. And whenever you're just surfing the the wave of like paying close enough attention to who you really are in that moment and how you really feel in that moment to uh, take ownership for how it connects to your past and things of that nature. Like, I guess what I mean by that is that all of the trigger things that we might ever bump into pretty much go back uh, to early, early places and maybe even pre birth places in the the womb or past lives. So we, it makes it, it takes a lot of the edge off and the pressure off of the situation you're in, in that moment to realize, Oh, this is way bigger than this one moment. And it's a pattern. And it's kind of like this detachment that lets you then start actually doing the work on yourself instead of rejecting, I guess, (laughs) the clarity that I'm describing. Mm, That's beautifully said, beautifully said. Yeah. It's funny. I just, (laughs) I recently had an experience in a trip to Amsterdam where I did psilocybin recently for the first time. Um, (laughs) uh, I had an experience of going back to, uh, I think I was about three or four months old. And (laughs) it's really crazy because this like just happened and I, I, while I've had like an an intuitive hit before about, you know, being in the womb and past lives and had, you know, readings and Akashic and going there all the time, the visceral experience I had of revisiting this time when I was three or four months old um, under the influence of psilocybin, traveling with psilocybin was crazy impactful to my life. Um, And the experience was you know, to give like a little detail was I was like taken to being in a room when I was in my crib and I was screaming, screaming, you know, like a three or four month old baby. If you've ever seen like screaming face red, like no teeth, all gums showing, you know, and I was watching as like, you know, this Brianna self, like adult Brianna self. And and I was watching my baby self crying in this crib. And it was like I was transported into the baby self and I could feel everything that I was feeling as a baby. And um, (laughs) it was intense. And so basically the story I was trying to get to, like, and I want to tell you in more detail if you want to know, but there was this wound that that occurred for me of feeling unsafe and neglected in that moment. And when I was 
traveling with psilocybin, I was shown throughout my entire life how that showed up, like visions of instances and experiences that I've had in this life where from that moment on, my whole life was, I carried that with me. It was tainted. All my experiences were through those goggles. And I'm still in like a process of figuring out like how to integrate and like release and like live with that knowledge now and, and transform in that way. Um, like whatever transformation is supposed to come from that. But yeah, it was like this like dark and twisty and fucking really scary and sad. And like that, like that happened to me. Like my parents, like, quote like did that to me like how could they you know and this is like all that like shadow and all that dark stuff and all that like pain but the clarity what you just ended with the clarity that came from that experience like hands down I can't even remember another time that was more impactful for me it just keeps it keeps happening to me that way like having these experiences of diving into myself whether it's with plants or you know anything else in this world but the more and more that I dive into that, the more and more clarity I get on my life, the more my life expands, the more interesting my life becomes. And yeah, it's crazy how that happens. <laughs> Congratulations on uncovering all that. I don't know if I've told this story before, but my first time with psilocybin uh, years back, I don't know, in my early 20s somewhere, I actually remember being a four-year-old. So like I had this experience of kind of blacking out, but not completely passing out and falling and landing on my chin and kind of scratching my chin while I was on the, the mushrooms. And it all of a sudden made me just go whoop and rush back in time to when I was four years old and I had jumped up and down in the shower. It was like the first time I was allowed to take a shower by myself and slipped <laughs> and fell. I was like so excited in there. I was like dancing and jumping up and down. That's what I do. And <laughs> slipped and fell and busted open my chin. And it probably needed stitches because I had a scar forever after that. And uh, anyway, what was weird is being taken back to that time. That wasn't actually like the trauma that was stuck in my circuits. That was just the memory portal. And then I ended up remembering once I went back to that past version of myself through the plant medicine, some abuse that I suffered from a hand, the hands of a relative as a four year old that I had like repressed and I hadn't remembered for, I don't know, all of my teenage years and my, most of my early twenties. And it wasn't like a horrific thing, but I, you know, so a lot of people have had worse experiences, but I realized that it was totally informing like everything that I had going on related to sexuality. <laughs> it was like totally messing, messing with me in that sense. And uh, it was it was crazy. It's very much like what you said. It was just like all of a sudden I was back there in it and could remember it all perfectly. And what I found since then, whenever we encounter this type of energy that's like frozen in our circuits and that therefore it's flavoring a lot of other things that we experience in life for maybe years as it's sitting there repressed and pushed down. It's that the self that we were back then was so was rejecting the experience so much out of fear that it would be like irreparable harm that it wouldn't even allow you to recall that it happened just to sort of like, if I can't see it, it's not real type of thing. And I think that we have totally got the capability to do mental consciousness time travel with ourself because anytime you've ever been going through something hard and then all of a sudden there's this like little voice that lifts you up and it's like you can do this or it gives you you have a positive thought i like to think that that's actually well of course it's still you but that it's like a future more expanded more complete or whole version of you that's going back in time through the memory hole and giving some aid to the past version of the self and I think that we can like re like, for example, your situation, if you spent time just sort of going back there and revisualizing it and re remembering it on purpose. But then from the perspective of like an omniscient narrator that knows everything that's going to happen and knows that everything works out OK and that loves the character, just like tell yourself that it's going to be OK, but like play the role of the missing energy there, which was like the parental mm -hmm. type role to yourself. And I think that can like really get that stuck stuff back flowing into circulation again, which gives you, you know, more overall total personal power. Mm, yes. 
is like a, a few years back, there was someone who told me, you know, about like inner child work and talking to your, that part of yourself that's, you know, inner child. And I don't know, really know how clear I am on, on what that energy is and talking to the inner child and labeling it like that. But I do know that what you said, like kind of playing that role of that missing, like supportive, like all knowing omniscient energy that you really are, that you're a part of, like letting that and consciously choosing. So talking to the inner child was something that I practiced for a little while. It was real helpful. Like, you know, those moments where I started feeling not confident or like really hard on myself. Hey, little Brie Brie. Hey, listen, listen, whatever happened when you were eight and you felt rejected by the kids at school and then you just constantly from then on out were trying to prove yourself that you were worthy of being a friend and like, that's okay. You have like tons of friends now. People love you. You love yourself. You're super cool. There's nothing (laughs) to worry about. You know, just kind of like filling in that gap you we all have we all say this is kind of cliche but we all have everything we need inside of us and i think that's 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 really awesome what you just said that's really awesome yeah fulfill that fulfill fill that energy gap for yourself i love that yeah it just like kickstarts the the flow again of the self-acceptance and self-love or something like that. And, you know, you don't have to even overly scrutinize like the metaphysics or the energetics of how it actually works. Or if you're really like doing time travel, just, I mean, whenever you're exploring inner space, whatever's there is your experience, but in outer experience, it's the same way. All you have is your perspective on it. So like, why not craft your own inner experience to, to work through those things once you become aware of them. But yeah, the plant medicines are a good way to help you possibly crack some of those shells. Although uh, in without the right set of setting, that can also be difficult and you can accomplish the same thing with like meditation. If you have a really good habit of it But in today's world, that's not always easy to uh, (laughs) to keep up with, of course, but Hey, let's talk about, you know, what took you from being a spiritual explorer to fully working with clients? I want to talk more about what you actually do with people while I've got you here and not just indulge in my own like <laughs> metaphysical speculations the whole time. Oh, thanks for the space to talk about this. Yeah, I could totally go off um, with you, I think for hours and hours. But yeah, so I am originally from St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, born and raised, my whole family is still there currently. I live in Phoenix, so moved here two years ago. So when I was in St. Louis, um, so my kind of first awakening story, I guess, is that I was like ultra Christian for a really long time. Like I actually got baptized when I was 21. Like so, I grew up in Missouri. You know that you're from that area, so it's like the Bible Belt, and you know, so there's yeah, this lots is my of, background too. <laughs> <laughs> right, Midwest. Yeah, I was interested that you. I were, it's interesting that you're from the same area um, of a country. So, so that was kind of my path, and then um, I actually kind of like broke away because it just like I feel like anybody who's kind of where I'm sitting now as this kind of like more awakened more aware version of myself that Christianity is just kind of fucking bust like (laughs) I love all of you but I just felt detached from it it felt constantly fear based like I just remember always being so anxious and fearful like of everything I was doing everything I was saying I'm not preaching about this enough to people like Jesus is gonna hate me it was just like I was like uh, fear living in fear like more than I already like you know did by myself like I created that more of that in my life and so after I don't know mid-20s I kind of broke away and, um, you know, graduated college and I became a pharma sales rep and I was like rolling in the cash and like total like material, like, you know, living, which was great. It was really fun, like for a while. And then, um, it's pretty cliche again, like (laughs) I'm a walking cliche. (laughs) No, I, there was something missing. There was something missing. I felt empty. I felt 
um, that I just wasn't living my fullest, like that, that I wasn't living from my heart, um, that I was living to please people that I was living to impress people. And it just felt empty. And I was like, you know, majorly in debt and all that stuff. So I really wasn't happy, even though I was playing like I was happy. And so what happened to me then was I started having dreams. I started having dreams about loved ones that had passed that were talking to me. And then I actually had a few premonition dreams of my loved ones that um, were getting ready to pass. And they told me like basically how and everything was going to be okay. And then, um, so I was starting to get like really freaked out, like what's going on, you know, and I would tell my mom, thank God, (laughs) my mom had kind of had an awakening about five years prior so she's always kind of been like really like spiritual never like in the christian realm like she was you know was interested in like mediums and psychics and things like that uh, manifesting and so when i started having these dreams i like i didn't have any i'm like oh my god like i'm having these dreams and this is what's happened and then one of the premonition dreams i had was actually my grandma which is her mother um right before she passed away she came to me in a dream with, with her mom and um, basically said, hey, I'm, I'm going to be joining her soon. Like, everything's going to be okay. Take care of your mom. And so when that happened, um, just stuff, all these questions, like, how does this work? Like, what does this mean? Um, something just sparked in me. And then I walked into a store. A book fell off the shelf. It was The Secret. Um, so that was my <laughs> intro <laughs> and it was like, I think it was like 2015. So the secret came out like 2006. So it's like, where was I during the time <laughs> that all that was going on? I don't know. I still haven't read it. So yeah, you know, I'm, I'm even more behind. I really feel like it was, it was obviously perfect. It was the perfect, um, set of knowledge for me at the time that I could really like digest, uh, and still be like fucking like doors in my mind flown wide open like what is going on is this real we really create everything around us like mind blown uh from there it was a really quick road i I joined the school of metaphysics uh it's a a really awesome place that is um i think they started somewhere in rural missouri actually Uh, and they have a few locations throughout missouri but there's one in our in my town actually in springfield yeah. Yeah, I think I do remember that. Is that the big one? I think that might be the big one. They, they might be the big one. I don't know. They have a, a couple of times a year, they have a big fair also, like a spirit fair where artists and vendors and healers come and congregate. That's going to be at the beginning of November. You should come to one of those. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to. Uh, so yeah, I was, um, they kind of caught, reeled me in there cause they, they were all about like dreams and interpreting dreams. And so naturally that was like kind of where my path had started. So, so I'm saying all this to say that like, it hasn't been very long for me since, you know, a few years relative to anybody else that's kind of doing this, this work that I'm doing. Um, so it's been, it's been a fast ride (laughs) it's been really enjoyable but also really like tiring and trying and um, getting out of my comfort zone a lot Um, and so when I was in St. Louis I started learning about energy work and getting you know a lot done and was interested in psychic and mediumship work took classes started you know channeling and just a whole trail of things and then you know starting a really really um, diligent meditation practice for a few years straight uh, which which I credit a lot of my growth and and my vibrational state I guess you'd say um, to that time when I was in school the school of metaphysics and so when we left, when we were leaving St. Louis, when we decided we just wanted to get out, I'm married. So my husband and I, we wanted to see more of the country, we wanted to see more of the world. We were always drawn to like the West. Um, when we moved to Phoenix, Arizona, it wasn't maybe a month. And I was like, I have to like start doing this, like this healing work. You know, I'd practice Reiki, certified in Reiki and other healing modality, just learning as much as I could about um, energy work. And, um, I just really felt called, like, I I have to like, do, we have to like do this. I have to hold space. I want people to come to my house and meditation. I just really felt this pull to, 
like, I guess it's what you call like that service to others. Like, I just felt like it wasn't enough to just work on myself anymore. I felt like what I'm learning, I wanted to, to hold space for others. And so that's kind of where my work and business started. I started, um, you know, hosting meditations. I started doing pro bono healing, um, holding pro bono healing sessions, networking. And then pretty soon it was word of mouth, like, oh, hey, I have this friend. She's, you know, does this. And so it really kind of started organically. And what I quickly realized was, Yes, the actual space for energy work and um, all of that was was fantastic. It was like the before, the discussion that I'd have with people before we went in setting intentions because, you know, ultimately like we, a lot of people say this and I'm myself included that I'm a healer because I heal myself. So <laughs> when we say I'm a healer, that's why I love saying I'm an energy practitioner. <laughs> so it doesn't put the responsibility and the empowerment on outside of ourselves. So a big part of my sessions is setting the intention that you're going to create and bring to you as much healing as you're ready for. I'm here to hold this space for you, this protective, sacred space. You can do this at home. You can do this at home <laughs> by yourself. You're here because you want support, you want support, and I'm here for you in that way. And so um, I love putting that out there. I feel like that's a message that um, was overlooked for a long time. And I think it's starting to like creep into us that we, again, have all the power within ourselves. So that's kind of what happened. Um, energy healing was the base and the start of it. I did readings for a while, psychic and mediumship readings, which was really fun. Um, but quickly draining. I don't think I was good at the whole uh, boundary and like protection and, you know, cleansing my field after sessions. <laughs> and so it wasn't yeah. so enjoyable for me. Yeah. That's a whole other realm. It's like, I mean, maybe we can explore that. There's so many places to jump off where, where you've been, what you've been talking about, but I'll just first say that you're actually, I think the second or third, maybe the third person on the show who kind of kicked off their journey as an empath and helping others and working with others through having dreams, connecting with their grandmother who was had dis, had passed away and being guided in some way by that. So that's kind of a cool pattern. I like to I like how there's this connection to ancestors coming in more and more for uh for a lot of us and since the whole Neptunian shift it, into Pisces, we've I think that was was that in 2012? I think that was 2012. So like for a lot of us in the last couple of years, we've been feeling that increase in sort of our spiritual connection more and more. And yeah, the, what I would say about like you're setting your intentions and someone coming to you, the healer, but really they're healing themselves is a lot of times whenever we're in most need of healing is when we're really scattered, like mentally scattered our psyche gets all chopped up into all the things that we're worried about and in these subdivided compartments and or all the things that we're obsessing over or whatever it is and then we can't hold a thought for longer than five seconds before we're jumping on to the next thing it's like it's part of this self disassociation that we become more sporadic at least for me that's maybe it happens differently for other people but if you're coming to the space of a person like you with setting intentions and you have all the metaphysical symbol and tools all around you to make the person like locked in in their attention for long enough to like actually let something come through and emerge <laughs> because you know instead of them thinking about how oh i need to mow my lawn later maybe the sound of um some music you're playing or like the relaxing in you know, essential oil diffuser you might be using all that could keep them in the zone in a way and help help them be anchored. I guess it's why these things are grounding things like sage and and um, using crystals like the more you can multi get a multifaceted approach to what you're doing. I think the more of the person's attention and intention is drawn into that space. And that's like my way of interpreting the whole creating space for healing thing. Mm, it's beautiful. 
Yes. 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 Being present is definitely something that I have to get present and practice um, and remind myself over and over. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it's, it's like, and it shows up like it shows up in different ways. Like, am I being present? And it feels different in different scenarios. So it's just like, yeah, you got to practice. I don't feel like being present always feels the same for me. Um, but yeah, like that, like you said, there's just like such a need when, um, when you, if you yourself have went in for a session or I'm talking about, you know, clients and then myself, my personal experience, like, when someone comes in for that dead, it's just like going for a massage, you know, like you create that space when they cross at your door or they jump on your zoom and it's just like zinc, the walls are up. This is this time only. And it's amazing what, how powerful just someone choosing to schedule an appointment for a healing session is just saying I'm dedicating this time specifically. Like I don't even know all the mechanics and the energetics. and like, what's really going to happen? Am I going to astral travel? Like who knows? All I know is this is this time for healing and getting to know myself. And like that intention alone, like clicking submit on your, you know, (laughs) book my appointment, like that just sends this energetic message. Like now I am ready to do this for myself. And so it really is that, you know, it's a beautiful thing, like setting intentions um, and creating that space and being really present together with someone. Uh, and, and just like, I am very, I've always been really outgoing. Like I do have an introverted side. I like time alone, you know, a lot of time alone actually. But when I'm with others, I'm so fired up. I love being around people. I love connecting with other people. And this line of work is just like so natural because in that moment before a healing session, when people are pouring their, their heart out, like pouring their heart out about this, like, I want to change this within myself. This is the thing I'm ashamed of. And just so much release would happen <laughs> before we would get into an energy healing session. And then afterwards, talking about what was received, emotions that came up, what are you taking with you out of this session? Because integration is like, it's just as equal, in my opinion, to the actual healing that occurred. Like the integration of what you take from plant medicine, what you take from energy healing, what you take, what you take from it and how it betters your life and betters you as a person and grows you as a soul here. Like that's the money. And so what happened then for me, I'm like, people are coming with, um, and I don't just want to, I quickly felt in this space of being like, just um, like word vomiting, like, you know, solutions, things you can do practices. And I just felt myself like coming at my clients, like, and they were very receptive, like, Oh, thank you. You changed my, you know, all this like beautiful stuff, but it felt like it was lacking power for them. Like it felt like Mm -hmm. I want to step back because Like, how did I feel empowered? How did I heal myself? How did I, how did I, someone would ask me a question and then I would do it for myself. I would come up with my solution. I would. And so um, in a string of synchronicities, once I started kind of having that feeling, then I came across life coaching and I was like, life coaching. Oh, well, who would hire a life coach? Like, what is that? Like, why would you need a coach for life? Quickly realized like that is, that is exactly what, what I, that energy was what I wanted to bring into my session. So I actually just graduated from um, a life coaching certification program with a awesome company called inner glow circle. Amazing. The um, founder and CEO, her name is Katie DePaula, and she's just this like, you would like look at her on her Instagram and think that she's just like fucking like LA, like Kim Kardashian. She's like this beautiful, like, you know, like all put together, but deeply, deeply spiritual, deeply grounded, deeply rooted in service to others. And um, it really like, drew me in, you know, there's lots of coaching companies and stuff like that. But really, um, so yeah, my business like started with energy healing, um, that 
that focus on the before and after the session was really important, that interaction, integration. And then like this kind of coaching sphere, this energy of coaching is like a really strong foundation to, to like really give that power back to someone. It's all about powerful questioning and, and how to pull forth information from someone, you know, um, for themselves. Like yeah. Inception, you have to make them think it's their idea. You got <laughs> yeah, to right. lead them to it. <laughs> And you know what? Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I also just want to throw out there. I think part of what makes it so magnificently powerful for somebody to press the schedule and appointment button or whatever is also coming into a non judgmental observer where that they can share whatever their problem is. Cause not everybody is like me in this. And some people have a really hard time keeping a lid on their issues, but like I'm the type of person where my personal problems, I can almost completely hide them from everybody, even the closest people to me if I wanted to. Mm. I don't know if I don't know if you're like that, but like it makes it it makes them more impervious to get rid of. Like because uh as soon as you bring it to another person and you like blurt it out and admit it, that's similar to like allowing that part of yourself and allowing the shadow. And part of the repression of the shadow involves like hiding everything that you don't like about yourself from as many people as possible. And yeah, I think it's really empowering to bring it to a non judgmental observer to the healer. And then if you're combining that with the life coaching, then they, you know, you can ask the right questions to help them see what's at the heart of whatever that issue is. And man, they've moved forward uh, 10,000 steps in one day where they may have gone 10,000 days, not moving an inch before. That. <laughs> love that, man. I love how your mind processes things and you spit out like these, just like awesome analogies and words. Like <laughs> I'm so in admiration of that. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I think this is a good segue. Cause I'll just say, I think it's uh, related to that. I'm a seven in numerology, which really? is like, yeah. Your your life purpose number, your life path number? Yeah. And I haven't talked about numerology a whole lot or life path numbers and mm. uh a 7 is supposed to be I guess like kind of good at the spiritual thing, kind of good at explaining things and analytical things and I feel like all yeah. that stuff does come pretty natural to me. But then we have a tendency to like sort of hermit up and and like not be sociable ignore the world that's another thing that i've recently been going through but anyway i i wanted you to talk a little bit about life path numbers and maybe give us the introduction to that i'd like to explore numerology and then move into how it possibly integrates with your work with clients and plays with astrology as a concurrent system um really excited to talk about numerology because I think it's super helpful towards yeah. it's like weirdly accurate. You'll just you have to check it out for yourself if you, if you have it. It is. It is weirdly accurate. And I love that you said weirdly accurate. Okay. So my path right now with astrology and numerology, like I'm this kind of person that I do. So funny story. I am a life path seven. So hello twin life path seven <laughs> i could i could tell <laughs> yeah yeah there's like this there's an air of like um of like focused passionate detachment like we can like talk about like rise above and like talk about all the stuff like we know and that we've learned but like there's also like that passion that comes through and yeah i love that that's so cool um uh, but so my relationship right now with astrology and numerology weirdly accurate okay i i learn what i need to know in the moment so for me like it would be like okay i would learn something about astrology and then like boom i would dive into it for like two months like just this one thing and then you know i'd learn something else about like myself or my own chart and be like oh my god like what other people have you know and then i would go it's so it's really research based for me um i <laughs> how i actually met Michael Tessarion or come across them was one, I had a dream about this term Druid that like I was one and I had never even heard of the word and I started Googling it. He was on an interview with um, a lady on Gaia, uh, Regina Meredith. 
And I, that's how I found Michael Tessarian was from following a dream term. He did an interview with her and he was talking about the Druids. And then, so then I asked this guy, I, I was like, he's so fascinating. Like, I wonder what his astrology chart is. Like, he's so fascinating and like he's the way his mind works. And so I actually went on his webpage, used his contact for him. I'm like, hi, I'm like an aspiring astrologer and I'm just now dipping in and I really would love to like know what your chart is. I thought you were just so fascinating. <laughs> he turned me down. <laughs> He's like, I really like to keep those details private. <laughs> I was like, okay. But then it actually turned into a really funny conversation. We started talking about like, he's like, you know, what do you do? And then he ended up having me on, you know, inviting me to the show with him and Dave. But uh, so yeah, like my path with like astrology, numerology, like I, I don't, I would never claim to be an expert. I don't do like astrology readings or like numerology reading, you know, yet who knows, whatever. But um, you introduce people to these tools so that they can take it up for themselves, which I think any of us are capable of doing, no matter our depth of mastery with any one tool. Boom. Couldn't have said it better. (laughs) Couldn't have said it better. I think I'm going to say that a lot in this, in this recording. So (laughs) yeah. Um, And so, yeah. So my, my knowledge is what I came to know about myself and then, you know, just sharing with others and clients. And so you asked a little about um, like, you know, numerology and the life path and the life path was one of the first numbers. And it's, it's one of the numbers that I've like in my, you know, few years of study um, have called like the big three. So like in astrology, I would call like the big three, like your rising sign, your sun sign, your moon sign. It's three of the most prevalent, powerful planetary bodies, but there's lots of other things in the charts. And then likewise with numerology, there's lots of numbers. There's lots of ways you can calculate numerology in a needle numerology chart, but big three are um, your day of birth, your life path, and your destiny, which is calculated by your birth name. So life path was one of the first numbers that I came across. Uh, be- well, it's life path, and then it's also known as the life purpose. And so um, I have always been drawn to like logic and science. I have a degree in biology. I was studying to be like a doctor and blah, blah, blah. So I've always been just very fascinated with science and mathematics and the philosophy behind all of, all of the, all of that and physics. Oh, so interesting. And, and so numbers was naturally when I started like having the awakening, I'm like, okay, so what's with astrology? And then I'm like, what is numerology? And when I came across life purpose, it was at the time of my life where I was like, what am I supposed to be doing? You know, like what, (laughs) what am I here for? Like, what do people want from me? <laughs> like, what am I bringing into this world? Like, um, and so studying the life purpose number, um, I found that mine was seven, but really what it gave me and what I feel like it gives a lot of people is just this very foundational starting point for, especially if you resonate with the information you find like online or what someone may give you in a reading, like you just start, you get like this foundation and starting point that starts to color the rest of your decisions about your purpose. You're like, okay, I know that as a life path seven, like I'm highly analytical, but I'm very spiritual. What does that look like? So then all of a sudden you come across like, Oh, I'm going to start my business. I want to incorporate it. But like, I don't like, it was just like, you know, how do you piece it together in every moment? So for me, what that, you know, looks like is different from someone else, but it really just gave me this like foundation of starting with kind of how I move throughout the world. What, what, what innate gifts do I bring into the world? And then every time a situation would arise, I'd be like, Hmm, why does this interest me? Is this like part of my purpose? Like, oh yeah, when I was reading about life path, like this is really like, I feel like this really resonates. This is who I am. And it would just start to color and help me make decisions. And then before you know it, like, even if you don't know what your purpose is, you're doing all these steps and voila, like it becomes your purpose. Like all of a sudden you just step into it. Um, And so it was just like a very um, logical, foundational, very clear cut way for me to say like, oh my God, like this person's a three 
that is them to a T. Oh my God, I'm a seven. Like that is me to a T, like weirdly accurate. So that was my beginning path. And if what I'd offer about the life purpose number is that it's the big, it's one of the big three. It's a very prevalent, powerful number in the chart. You can get a lot of informa- information very quickly if you look up your life purpose number. Um, but again, it's just taking that information and integrating it into your life. So once you have that information and you feel validated about who you are, like, this is why I hate this job because I'm actually, you know, like to like be communicating and I'm stuck in a cubicle all day. And, you know, so it just can validate some of your feelings, but the integration that happens after you have this information, that's where you really start like using numerology. I feel like, um, you know, in your life, at least that's, that's been my experience so far. Right on. I think I could agree that when we begin to just scour for knowledge, like sevens really tend to do more than the average. (laughs) We are actually, even though it's just like passing by your conscious mind, you know, flipping through pages of a book, you're reading this or that. And what you're going to keep from that, you don't even know in the moment. You're just going through it. I think that you can actually sort of program your DNA, really, or your inner self with new levels of knowledge that allow it to start unlocking new parts of your life experience or getting you different places on the map that you haven't opened up before. But if you didn't have like the, I guess, capacity to imagine it, then you couldn't get there. So searching for knowledge on on things that might relate to yourself, natally speaking, can give you an imaginary scaffolding to start to build around to create a life that feels like it vibes with who you are. And then the other important thing about it, the number side is realizing that numbers are more than just a way to count shit that <laughs> <laughs> they actually mean something like there's a reason they they're hard coded into the reality as like a, a conceptually speaking as a metaphysical thing. Mathematics is the underlying everything that we experience and mm. at the core of mathematics is numbers. And so they, definitely are bigger building blocks than just a tool in our uh, modern kit of ways to master the material world. There's something very deeply spiritual about each of, at least especially the first nine integers that there's a lot of ways to look at it. So life path number, you're adding up the month, day and year of your birthday in a certain way. And your website has instructions on how to do that. But then there's also the day, of day of birth does that just take into account like what number of the month it was for you it's not one i'm familiar with yeah so just your day of birth so um my birthday is november 18th and so my day of birth is the 18th and in numerology you know we always separate the numbers add them get down to a single digit so my day of birth would be 18 one plus eight is nine so a nine day of birth and yeah, I have a couple of YouTube videos about um, the the single digits and then how they relate to the big three. So like definitely I can shoot a link to that. Um, but the day of birth is really, it's like one of the most simple numbers, but it, because it's so simple, it's, it's simply like a code of your essence, like your core vibe that you just pop into the world with. It's how you innately like move through the world, like how you're responding to the world, how you feel innately about the world. It's a very, um, I call it the core essence number goes by other names, but day of birth. It's like kind of like this just core who you are, this unchanging, the steadiness or unsteadiness. Um, And so, yeah, it's just, it can be a very powerful piece of information again about, and I like what you said earlier. I wanted to go back like, so that what you said, I can't remember exactly how you said it, but knowing this information, it's, it does, it unlocks what you're, what you think about yourself and essentially gives you permission. Like we don't need permission, but then it's like when we get it in the form of validation and astrology and numerology, then all of a sudden, yes, there's like, an unlocking like, ah, I'm capable of this now. 
which you've always been capable of. You're capable of infinite things. <laughs> but yeah, that it's like numerology and astrology can ha- they have that beautiful way of unlocking that and giving permission where you weren't giving yourself permission before. One thing that came for me with this, with um, numerology was around in astrology too was around sexuality. And me being from the Midwest, like Christian kind of ish upbringing and all of that, like sex was like oh, a sin before marriage, and um, sex with yourself is a sin, and it's just like uh, it's so taboo, right? And and you know I'm here like this, you know, white Caucasian and American Midwest girl. It's so highly prevalent in my chart that sexuality is actually like how I heal myself and also how I can offer healing to others. And (laughs) that was like mind blown uh, for me and giving myself permission to embrace like the sexual side of things. I talking about it with other people, holding space while others explore and talk. Um, yeah, that was something that, that I wouldn't, I don't know that I would have given myself permission, even on the spiritual path. Who knows? Maybe everything came to me at the right time, but uh, it definitely unlocked that for me, giving permission to ourselves. And it's just so crazy. Like, it's just information. It's just information. But that information holds so much power if we take it and integrate it into our lives and give ourselves permission. Yeah. Yeah, you might look at the chart reading you get and go, I already knew all this about myself, really. But did you ever look at it all as a whole? Like the holistic view of it, I think, has a a big piece of this puzzle that whenever you do actually not just look at the inf- information relating to your natal chart or whatever and go, oh, yeah, I'm like this, this and this. But instead of just kind of knowing that in the back of your mind and your unconscious, now you're bringing that knowledge to the conscious mind and that bringing things from the unconscious to the conscious is sort of the whole journey that we're on. (laughs) It's kind of the whole thing. So it's a great (laughs) Kickstarter. Even if you, even if you've already looked at your chart before and you go back like two years later, or you look at your solar chart for the, just for the year, Mm. Instead of for your your actual birth date, things like that, you're going to keep uncovering things from the unconscious. It's going to just be like you're you're uh, raking the dirt, but you're finding all these crystals in it, even (laughs) even though you thought that you'd come through it. I love that's a great analogy. Yeah, I found um, I I got a really awesome badass numerology report when I was first starting to learn about it from I think it was numerologist.com. They have a bunch of cool things. And yet yeah, I found that I read through the report, digested it like, you know, in a matter of hours. And then I'm like buzzing, like what do I even do with that? Like how to, and going back and reading these reports, like I, I actually I offer astrology reports and I like the solar return one is just like, you know, the yearly, like around your birthday, like um, really, really fascinating and helpful (laughs) for me. Like my question right now sitting here, have you ever really seen overlap between numerology and astrology? Like for example, as a life past seven, the ruling planet for that is supposed to be Neptune and I'm, super Piscean. I kind of tend to look at my chart more on sidereal than tropical, which moves me from Aries to Pisces because my birthday's 322. But either way, I'm right on this borderline. And so Neptune rules Pisces also. And I feel like a lot of connection to that whole side of the wheel. I was wondering, do you see a lot of that overlap whenever you're looking at the two things in conjunction, like that the sun sign matches the same ruler planetary wise as like their life path, things like that. Yeah. I'll tell you um, real quick. So while I remember going back and redigesting your report, every time you read something about yourself, you're going to pull out something different each time. Like you said, bringing from that unconscious subconscious place to the conscious. And it depends on what you're willing to perceive at that moment, what experiences you've had from, you know, January until December when you're like going back, reviewing your year. So yeah, constantly like reviewing that information and 
something's gonna, different's going to jump out to you and potentially provide you more validation than you know when you read it once. You think, oh, I read it, and there's nothing more for me to gather. Not true. <laughs> Not true. But yeah, so there is like an up and coming kind of term um, called astro numerology, tying the two, the two together, um, and. And, and honestly, because like I dove so far into very specific things about astrology and numerology, um, what I've come to integrate and learn for myself and tying the two together. So, you know, when you look, maybe look at an astrology chart and you know how, so in each astrological sign, if you look at like a traditional like wheel chart in each sign, there's, there's 30 degrees. So there's 12 signs and uh, so it makes 360 degrees a full circle, right? So when someone's saying like, oh, your son was at, you know, 11 degrees in Scorpio when you were born, that's what it means. It's like how far into the sign or how far outside of the sign. So these degrees, right, are numbers. And and it, it's been known in astrology, like the ancient Vedic system, like they actually have like chunks in that 30 degree little wedge on your chart. Like if you're farther into it, you're actually going to have, you know, these characteristics most likely. And if you're this far, in, if you're just now into it, you may want to. And then there's the cusp where you're like right on the border, like yourself, you know, between Aries and, and Pisces. And it's like, it, it's significant. It's significant energetically where you decided to just blast into the earth at this degree, <laughs> right? <laughs> like you, you picked it. You picked it for a reason. It's energetic. Um, and we didn't really dive into that. I love what you said earlier too about like numbers and the energetics and the communication and um, that they're much more than just, you know, adding shit up. But yeah, so the what I've been studying uh, for a while, and I actually just took a course with a. She's a. She, I think she calls herself a wealth astro numerologist. Her name's Tanya Gabrielle. Very puts a lot of awesome free content out, um, and she's very very hip to tying like the two schools of thought together. So, yeah, um, I recently started doing kind of just like chart evaluations and I'm building like a living library for myself. Like as we speak for like the last year of, of people with, uh, you know, their sun sign, like I said, for an example, sun sign in Scorpio at 11 degrees versus a person with their sun sign in Scorpio at 18 degrees. Like what is, how does that show up? And it's really, really, really interesting to say, Someone that came in at degree number nine versus a degree number two in Scorpio, they're intense and they're passionate. However, the nines just seem to have this really, when they come in at nine degrees, they have this like fucking like drive, like they're just unstoppable versus someone who's like this two, like they're kind of like always like weighing things out, like balance and like duality. Like they're not so, so oh, like, you know, driven and Yes, absolutely. In that way, like that's how I've been exploring this um, kind of tie between astrology and numerology lately. But I do believe there's like an infinite way, <laughs> infinite way that they're tied together. But that's just my experience lately. It's really interesting. And I wonder how that even gets mapped. But if you are incorporating numerology, there's got to be some way that you can understand the relationship between the angles and all that that gives at least some indication of what the differences would be. But yeah, that gets into a really nitty gritty type of territory where even looking at astrology and broad strokes can be super informative and um, empowering for sure. But give people a reminder of where to find you and how you can connect with them and uh, anything else that you'd like to tell us or tie any 
loose ends up, got the floor. Yeah, sure. Thanks so much. So yeah, um, my site is just my full name. So Brianna Colombini dot com. So we'll hopefully link that. Um, you know, got the YouTube, got the blog going on at Butt First Truth. Um, and I, I have a very active like Facebook page. So if you ever want to just, you know, reach out, you can reach out via Facebook or my website. Uh, if you're interested in knowing a little more about your natal numerology or your natal astrology, uh, I'll just say this. I have software that runs damn awesome charts and spits out awesome reports. It's the best one I found. It's what all the pros use. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, so the software is called t- um, time, time cycle. Uh, but you know, it's, it's pretty expensive. So, um, at the, uh, if you just want to know about your chart, I actually do offer reports on my website too. So you can check some of those out. We mentioned a few of those here and yeah, like I'm, I'm just really grateful to be like in this day and age, like this, you know, Aquarius where we can connect like over the internet and, and form connections with each other. And, um, I would just say like, just like chances putting, you know, you're putting all this great stuff out in the world with Interverse and, you know, and I'm sitting here and allowed the space to put things about myself out here. Every one of us is like so damn awesome. And it's our obligation and our responsibility to share ourselves with like with the world, whatever that looks like. So yeah, like just don't like, don't forget that. Like share yourself, share yourself. Yeah, that's self-influencing midwell or self-influencing ego, like the same as nature being the influencer. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. So thanks for thanks for everything. This has been a great conversation. Like I said, couldn't have asked for a more interversity type of talk. <laughs> we went all over the map and we were also in sync with a lot of things that have been on both our minds lately. So just another proof that all of us that are in the flow of authentic self-examination and expression are going to be in the know on the same stuff at the same time in some way, shape or form is going to resonate. And I love getting that confirmation again and again. And I look forward to the next time that we can play this game once more. Brianna, yeah, this has been great. Same. Thanks so much. guys looks like we got to the end of another episode i want to thank you for making it this far with us if this one didn't put the fun frosting on your consciousness cake i don't know what to tell you i guess you need a little longer in the oven (laughs) but seriously this was really fun i had a great time connecting with brianna someone that i knew that i would vibe with as soon as i heard her on another show like i said She has a great appearance on Unslaved Podcast with Michael Tesserion and David Whitehead. And I'm sure she's got a bright future making more media content. Her personal videos on her YouTube channel are fantastic. So if you want a little more information on different elements of numerology or to just get her take on a variety of spiritual topics and even some conspiratorial topics, then go to BriannaColombini.com or ButFirstTruth.com, both of which you can find linked in the show notes. So many, many thanks to Brianna for joining us today. I really enjoy talking to anybody that's also a seven, although I guess I don't always know when they're seven. Sometimes you can just tell. If you got this far in the episode, then I'm sure you could tell how easily that she and I clicked. And it does seem to be a common theme to visit on some of the topics that she brought up with a few other guests having had similar experiences with Uh, Loved ones coming to them through dreams who'd been deceased or predictive dreams, things like that. Really enjoy talking about the idea of creating space for healing, too. When I do talk to somebody on this level, on this vibe, it really helps pull out the ideas from my own head so that I can crystallize them into little nuggets for my own enjoyment and reflection. 
because it seems like, to, at least this is my style, I don't fully even develop my own thoughts until I have a long conversation about it. So cheers to that. And I hope you're having these type of fun conversations out there in your life as often as possible. And I think if you're pursuing your own development and self-knowing, like the things we talked about in this episode, you're probably going to be attracting that type of vibe from others as well. So, all right, that's good stuff. (laughs) I suppose I could tell you a little bit about the Plus extension too. If you don't know about Interverse Plus, it is double your fun, double your pleasure, double your podcast content. Every episode that I'm able to, I get, which is almost all of them, I get a second hour extension with the guest, and that is exclusive to people who subscribe on Patreon for now. If anybody out there is a coder and wants to help me set up an Interverse website revamp that allows me to have you subscribe directly through that, let me know because I'm all ears. I, I would love to figure that one out. I don't love being on Patreon, but as far as your experience goes with it, it's pretty simple. You just go to patreon.com forward slash Interverse, become a member at the $5 tier or better, and you can get access to the secret private RSS feed link that gives you the double long plus episodes. And, you know, I don't really advertise or anything on this show. So the only way that I'm getting any kind of energetic reciprocation from you guys, other than if you talk about the show a lot and share it a lot, would be if you became a member. So would love to have more plus people on. It has been a bit of a gap between episodes lately. To be honest, I think. I was saving myself a little bit from some burnout by just putting the brakes on a little bit. And uh, that really came more from not scheduling super efficiently. But I'm making up for it. I'm making up for it this month because I've got more episodes to record in the last week and the coming week than like a typical two month period. So (laughs) maybe that's a mild exaggeration, but it's pretty close. It's not that much hyperbole hyperbole. So anyway, I love. uh, I love these second hours and I think we get deeper. We go into the next dimension of the information usually in the second hour. And on this one, Brianna gave us her thoughts on the value of investing in self-educational materials. I guess you could even kind of consider the show that. I mean, it's not like a structured education, but you can learn a lot from hearing people's deeper thoughts and theories on things and, you know, what they're into. In the second hour, we always go further. So We also talked about giving yourself permission to be creative in any way that you want. Talked about video games, deep fantasy, escapism, and reclaiming our active masculine energy. This part was crazy. We talked about cosmic disclosure and uh, meeting space Mayans. I guess they're like inner space Mayans, but still pretty cool stuff. And then that kind of spiraled into a talk about contacting interdimensional beings in general and what that might mean, what that might look like. We discussed Terrence McKenna, psychedelics, and of course, the good old architecture of the universal consciousness grid and whether or not mushrooms have something to do with that. Then last but not least, we finished it off with a talk about increasing your personal bioelectric current with Ormus, also known as monoatomic gold which is an interesting supplement out there floating around the spiritual community. So when we talked about the meeting interdimensional beings and that type of thing, non-physical entities or interdimensional entities, one thing I forgot to mention in the conversation with her was something that happened to me just like earlier, the day before that, actually the night before that. I was meditating and I, I kind of got into the zone. It was good meditation. And then out of nowhere, out of the stillness, because I was kind of in a still, quiet, thoughtless state for a little bit, I saw this like really clear image in my mind's eye of this old ratchet, like hag type of monstrous woman creature, right? And I it didn't like, I didn't really have a reaction to it. I just saw this really clearly. And then... I like exhaled or let it go. I just let go of the image or whatever. And as I did, I felt this like jet of air go out of my left ear. Like somebody was shooting air out of my ear. Really strange. And I felt lighter and a little better after that. So my only theory is that maybe that was some sort of uh, entity attachment or ancestor problem. Really not knowledgeable enough to be sure about that. And it's obviously a really subjective experience. But I thought I'd bring it up because it kind of connects to what she saw. But 
to point out that there's also, you know, if there's like nice space minds out there that want to help us ascend and evolve or whatever, then there's probably monster hag witches <laughs> in the spirit world that I don't know, want to do some kind of vampiric stuff. Put your eyeballs in a stew pot. I, could be anything. Very Halloweeny feeling, which is appropriate, I guess, because it's about halfway through October currently. So I had a couple other things to catch you guys up on before I let you go. First of all, I was a guest on Cosmic Keys podcast. If you didn't see me talking about that on social media, definitely go check that out. CosmicKeysPodcast.com. I was episode 43 where we talked about festivals, transformation, my personal journey in transforming, I guess, art and uh, the occult side of festivals. And what's cool is if you're a plus member they were nice enough to let me have the full second hour of the episode, the full two hour episode. It's more than that, actually, because they have a sweet astrology forecast and tarot reading that they start every show with, which is cool because it's like geared toward the week. So go listen to that now and see how it lines up with your current week, because we're still in that week. It only came out on Monday. And anyway, they gave me the full show to put to our plus members on our plus feed, which is cool. And when they come on the show in a few weeks, we'll do the same for them. Looking forward to talking to Dan and Scarlett about all kinds of astrology and tarot related topics and maybe continuing some of the threads that we had going in my appearance on their show. But in the second hour of their show, I also got to give practically like an impromptu I Ching lesson. I did an I Ching oracle. If you're not familiar with the I Ching, it'd be a great thing to find out more about through that episode because... I kind of surprised myself. I did a good job presenting it overall. When I listened back to it, I was happy with how it turned out. It definitely felt like I hit a kind of flow state and got a lot of my ideas out there clearly. And the actual reading was interesting and it applies to anybody listening. Great thing about the I Ching is all of the oracles or all 64 parts of the I Ching could apply to anybody at any time if you really looked inside yourself because it's just highlighting elements of your own energy and your own consciousness and in a certain configuration. And the other thing I wanted to throw out there is on iTunes, if you leave a review on the podcast app by searching for the show and clicking on the leave a review button at the bottom, I really like to read those out here because I'm grateful for it. And I like to hear what you guys have to say. So even if you write something mean, which has never happened, I'll read it back on the show unless it's like, horribly mean and uh got a couple new ones here to share first from emily ridout who was actually a guest on the show a little while back she says love this podcast and what it stands for chance takes listeners through a variety of topics that all point to the same thing there's a universe within you and it's the same as the universe outside you this delightfully esoteric teaching spans millennia belief systems and practices and chance looks at it all thanks chance for all you're creating well, that's cool for you to say. You guys should all check out Emily's episode on the show and get on her email list, if nothing else, because she puts out really cool astro yoga updates where, you know, she's combining astrology and yoga and giving you poses that might be perfect for the time of year we're in or what have you. So the second review I wanted to read, by the way, thanks, Emily, is from Kelly. And she says, such energizing info. Thank you, with like five or six U's in there. So it's like, you, thank you so much for your dedication to sharing all of this info that perfectly blends metaphysics, health, science, systems, and beyond. These topics are fuel for us to keep pushing towards the universal evolution of consciousness and fulfilling our purposes here on Earth. This is hard work, but hearing your stuff helps downloads come with ease and grace. Smiley face. Yeah, thank you, Kelly. You hit it on the head as far as like my intention for what I'm trying to accomplish with the podcast. So thank you for the nice review. I'd love if you guys did the same. You don't have to write something if you just drop five stars there. It still helps more people find the show and get it into more people's feeds and suggested feeds and all that. And even if it doesn't, it's still kind of a cool thing to get that feedback. So <laughs> But it's up to you. There's lots of ways you can help the podcast. Just sharing it with your friends, word of mouth or posting about it is great. Or subscribing on Patreon is the greatest thing you can do. It's good for both of us because you get twice as much episode enjoyment. And uh, I suppose, yeah, leaving a review here is a good way to do it. Or get creative. I don't know. Any help the show with like uh, prayers <laughs> or something. Send me some Reiki. Help me get more energy. I'm actually not tired, but. 
all around, I'm feeling quite stoked about life, actually. And I, I love you guys, and I appreciate you being here with me. Brianna was awesome. Don't forget to go find her on social media and say what's up. And stay tuned because I got a bunch of stuff coming on the way. So many episodes in the shoot. It's crazy. Oh, hey, let me throw you guys one more uh, thing out there. Plus members at a higher tier have been given a perk that involves us like meeting and talking for 30 minutes or so every month. I haven't been fulfilling that very well, but I finally got some people in that tier that are good for it, (laughs) that want to like talk and connect. So I'm going to publish on the Plus feed a recording I had with Cole Lee, a very, very big supporter of the show and awesome all around person and essential oil master, among other modalities. And we had a great talk. It was fun. So watch out for that on the Plus feed when I have some time to throw it up. But uh, other than that, I wanted to see if you guys were interested in me opening that up to all Plus members. As far as like a live stream goes, if it would be cool if I did that, if there's interest in that. So let me know if you want to maybe be doing a joint session together, chatting it up about anything or whatever you have questions on or just hanging on a somewhat monthly basis. I'll probably switch up the day month to month so that if, you know, some people can never do Sunday that we can make it work. But I want to get more connection with you guys as much as possible. So if you want to do the same, let me know. I'd love to maybe make that a thing. And other than that, hit me up, chance at interversepodcast.com. Let me know who you want to hear on the show. If you got shows that you like a lot that might fit my personality in some way, maybe let them know about me. See if they want to do a podcast swap. I love that. Like I just did with Cosmic Keys because that turned out awesome. I really like being a guest. If you couldn't tell, I can talk a lot. (laughs) And sometimes, actually all the time, I have to hold my tongue and hold back. And let the guest actually get their ideas out. And then by the time I get through editing and I'm at the outro, I don't really feel, you know, jazzed up the same way as I do in the middle of the conversation. So I really like that live energy talking to somebody would love to be a guest on more shows talking about anything. So, yeah, if there's something that you like, put us in touch, me and them, and we might be able to collab. Podcaster collabs are always good because both people kind of know how to do a conversation. <laughs> so that's it. I'm going to go walk my dog. It's been a great time sitting here with you all. Really love talking to Brianna and meeting her. I know I said that a bunch, but it's true. And I love what I do. This is what I'm here to do. There's other things I would like to do, but right now this feels like the best thing to be doing, especially when I'm sitting here in the middle of doing it. Feeling awesome. So I'll talk to you guys soon and uh, much love. Be good out there. And don't forget to bring a towel. All right, I got a little addendum to this outro. I know I already said bye to you guys, but I had to put in this music from my own eyes because as I was was editing the show, I came across it on my SoundCloud feed and I was like, oh man, I've been sleeping on this new music for three weeks. So my own eyes spelled M-I-O-W-N-I-Z-E. He's a homie, buddy named Mike. And he's been making music for a good couple of years now. He's been on the show way back in the day. And I just had to play this stuff on the show. I, a while back, said I wasn't going to put music in the show anymore because it gets us kicked off Spotify. But I'm too stoked on this. So enjoy. Link in the show notes.
Oh, no.